There are several different ways that we can utilize cloud computing offerings. And we often term these as the deployment models and the service models. In this lesson, I'm going to cover cloud computing deployment models. You very likely heard the terms on the left-hand side of this table, private cloud, public cloud, hybrid cloud, and maybe multi-cloud as well. So this table is just a very brief description, and then we're going to look into these in a bit more detail. With a private cloud, an enterprise will deploy their own infrastructure and applications into their own data center. So much what we saw in the traditional IT operating model, the difference is they might layer some software on top to make it into an actual cloud. So to have those characteristics of a cloud computing service. And some of the software you might use to do that would be from VMware, Microsoft, Red Hat, or OpenStack. Then got the public cloud. So this is where you're actually consuming a service from a third party, typically publicly over the internet. And this will often be a multi-tenant service. So other people, other customers, other organizations will be using the same underlying infrastructure that you're using. And examples of this would be AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Platform. A hybrid cloud is where you use a combination of private clouds and public clouds. So with a hybrid cloud, you might use AWS for your public cloud, and you might have a on-premises implementation of a private cloud using VMware. And you would do that when you have use cases for both of those clouds. With multi-cloud, you're using a combination of public clouds and private clouds. So organizations find that they have a use case for AWS, for Microsoft Azure, and then maybe on-premises with VMware and Microsoft as well. So let's look at these in a bit more detail. So with the private cloud, you have your own data center, and then you must build the infrastructure in it. So that might include things like a virtualization cluster. So you're running virtual servers on this virtualization cluster. You've then got storage and backup systems. You've got network and firewall systems. And then you need to build and manage all of this yourself. On top of it, you'll need some software. So you'll need to layer on some capabilities to turn this into an actual cloud computing offering. That includes things like self-service portals and service catalogs. So people have that on-demand self-service capability. We've then got automation and configuration management. We've got billing and reporting for measured usage. And then we've got a multi-tenancy controller so that you can have multiple tenants. They might be departments in your organization, for example. The cloud management software layer is also not very simple to put in place. There's lots of software out there, but from my own personal experience, this can be quite a complex thing to implement in your own private cloud. But all this is possible for sure. And many organizations successfully use this model. What are the benefits? So you've got complete control over the entire stack. So it's up to you to choose the type of hardware profiles that you want to use, how you configure the software layers. Everything is within your control. And security. So some organizations do find that they want to keep or they might need to for some kind of compliance regulations. They might need to keep data on premises and not put it into a public cloud that's multi-tenant. Next up, we have the public cloud. So typically you'll connect over the internet or a private network connection to a public cloud. So you've got your corporate office, the internet, and then your public cloud. And then you're consuming resources. You can provision compute, storage, network, databases, and all sorts of other services in the public cloud, and then consume them from your corporate data center. And as you know, you can also consume them from anywhere else as well, because they're basically cloud-based services, they have that broad network access, so you can consume them on the road as well. The benefits here are you get a variable expense, so you're paying for usage, you're not paying all those capital costs for that private cloud. You also get economies of scale. The public clouds like AWS and Azure and Google are all very big organizations with thousands of customers. So there's huge efficiencies there, which means they can bring down the cost for their customers. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be cheaper. You have gotta check that out. We'll explore that further in this course, but there are some economies of scale there for sure. You also get massive elasticity. So that means you can really ramp up your services when you need to. And this is a massive benefit for the cloud for some organizations who are growing really fast or who have very variable loads. So they have um, extremely busy periods of the year and then very quiet periods of the year. 
and they want to make sure that they're able to cater for their customers during the busy times and not have a huge operating cost during those not so busy times. Next up, we have the hybrid cloud. So as I mentioned before, this is where you're using a combination of public clouds and private clouds. Often organizations find that they don't want to put everything in one place. They've got a use case for something in the public cloud. It fits really well. It works well. It costs the right amount. They can scale it. But then they have other applications that they prefer to use a private cloud for. And there could be very good reasons for that as well. So again, you're connecting over the internet between your clouds. You might have a private network connection if you need better bandwidth or consistent performance as well. So the benefits of this model is really about keeping your applications and sensitive data in the right places. So that might mean that it's more secure keeping it in a private cloud. It could also be more secure in a public cloud. It really depends. And you can take advantage of things like the offerings you get with cloud computing services like software as a service or infrastructure as a service, and also that elastic scalability as well. Also, connecting these clouds can mean that it's easier to move your data and applications between them. So you might use some form of cloud bursting, where when you need extra capacity, your private cloud application bursts into the public cloud and uses resources there. Or you might use it as a conduit to migrate data and applications to eventually move into a public cloud operating model. Lastly, we have multi-cloud. So here you're literally just using a combination of cloud services. So here we have an organization connected over the internet. Again, it could be a private link. And they're using services from Azure, from AWS, and private clouds from VMware and OpenStack as well. So again, this is all about catering for specific use cases. Some applications may be better suited to Azure or AWS. And some applications might run better, or you might find that you have better cost or even performance in a private cloud scenario. That's it for this lesson. You now understand the cloud deployment models. And in the next lesson, I'm going to cover the cloud service models.